Okay, so we wrote our first program. Now our second program we're going to write is we are going to write a program just that's all it's going to do is to, to exercise every component on our test bed. This will make sure that everything is plugged in correctly. And once it's written, we'll know um, we can just run this anytime when we're starting to work with our test bed and uh, we'll know whether everything is working correctly. Okay, so let's do go ahead and do a new file. We're going to do, uh, once again, we're going to do File, Save As. Okay. And we're going to Documents. Okay. And of course, we're going to click. And then we're going to do um, call it test test bed, which is going to be too confusing. So we're going to call it test the test bed, and click save. Okay, now for our second program, remember that we don't have to uh, do all of the um, initial setting up the sensors. I'm just going to highlight from my first program. I'm just going to highlight my setup, bring it into my second program here, and paste it in. Okay, because it's all just code. It's just being written for us by the by the other program. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and use my natural language to go ahead and bring in um, our uh, start motor. Okay, wait time. Okay, uh, so our first motor that we have is moat claw. Okay, so we're going to do moat claw, and the speed is going to be 127. And our time is just going to be half a second, so it's going to be 0.5. Okay, now remember that when you, whenever you enter code, you need to have it fully commented, okay? Because the fact of the matter is that if you come back six months later, you won't remember what's going on in the program. A simple program like this is one thing. As soon as you start, as soon as your programming code starts to be a bit like spaghetti, you'll have difficult following telling which strand of spaghetti is where without comments. So every single time you do something in program, you must have a comment. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add our comment, and that's going to be to test our claw motor. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and keep programming this, and I will catch up with you in just a few minutes. Okay, so at this point we have our uh, test program written. Um, if we can just go down through it here, we have test the claw. Um, notice that each test the right motor, test the left motor, you notice that each of them turn on uh, in turn for uh, 0.5 or 0.1 seconds. Um, motor left should turn for 0.5. The claw is easier to do for 0.1 at a slow speed because of the fact that, or have it at a slower speed because of the fact that it'll jam. Uh, test LED, we turn on, on for two seconds, then off. And then we wait a couple seconds, and then we turn it on for the bump switch. Notice the bump has a wait of 0.05 seconds after the until bump because that's the counteractive balance of the switch. Um, same thing on the um, test the limit switch, same thing on the bump switch. Then finally we're going to test the line follower or potentiometer. In order to test these, you need to go ahead and open the debugger. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we click robot debugger. Now take a look, the potentiometer, we need to turn it, so I'm turning it one way, it goes higher, I turn it all the way down first to get it set, and then the line follower is uncovered, we need to make sure that's above 2,000, they're uncovered. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close the debugger now. Okay, and those values is what we'll use to test the, um, the line follower and the potentiometer. So here we have the, um, the line follower here, it's testing it. Basically, if it goes down below 1,500, then back up, uh, turns lights off, turns the LED off, waits five seconds, um, uh, uh, then uh, it'll wait until it goes down and get under 1,500, then back up, and then turns the LED off again. It makes no sense. Okay. Can do that other off. So basically, we're waiting for the the uh, line follower to go twice before it moves on to testing the potentiometer. And we can do the same thing here with the potentiometer. Except the potentiometer is the last one, so we don't need that second part. Okay, so that's a completed program. We run that, and it should um, test each of the parts of the test bench in turn. Uh, good luck. It's your turn to write the same type of program.